Cool, so where we left off, we had just eroded our terrain. We'd applied a couple of different nodes and plugged them from outputs to inputs. We'd eroded it down and that's all well and good. So the next thing I wanna have a look at is how we could uh, generate a texture for this. If we wanted to um, give it some color and actually make it look like uh, you know rocks or dirt or that kind of thing. World Machine comes with uh, some really handy generators, um, uh, macros, sorry. And they're not instantly accessible. You actually have to load them yourself. So you go to macros, hit this file button, and uh, we can see a bunch of different ones in here. So the one I'm looking at is basic coverage. Um, you could also do things like uh, slope coverage, local heights or height coverage. A lot of these ones can be used in combination to output different texture masks. So when you are bring them into a game engine or something like that, you'd be able to isolate different areas of the terrain and apply different materials. Um, as it stands, I'm just gonna update these checked items to toolbar and you see them pop in under the back macros there. I'm only probably gonna use this one, this basic coverage, although there was another one that was colorizer. That's, oh, hang on. <laughs> when you update the checked items, it actually clears all the ones that are there. So I'll make sure I've got both of the ones I want there ticked, close them, and let's throw a basic coverage in there. So I'm just gonna put this out in the world here. And this basic coverage takes a terrain input and an erosion input. Now the cool thing when you're using erosion is that you've got different outputs. You've got a flow map, a wear map, and a deposition map. And you can use each of those differently. So it's storing the information about where the um, geological material, the rock, the sediment, all that kind of business uh, has come from and where it's gone. So we'll actually end up with a really cool effect here. So I'll take my primary output, plug it into the terrain input, and then if I click on it, I get a preview of what the texture would look like. So this is actually using all of the height information and the slope information in the terrain. It's looking at it from top to bottom, working out where certain angles are on it and applying different materials, different, a different color to it, sorry, um, depending on its slope and its height. So we can see down in the bottom of this valley, we've got some green, uh, I guess, grass, then we've got some muddy stuff, some drier clay, all the way up to the top where we've got very dry stuff and it's fully white. So if I were to um, right click on an item and choose set device display hint, um, if I choose terrain, no, I'll choose mask. It will actually show me the grayscale of that terrain. So as I said earlier, the darker areas are gonna be the bottom and the brighter areas are gonna be the top. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how the terrain displacement actually works and how it's represented. So we can see a lot of really gradual kind of soft shifts in uh, shade here in tone, I guess. Uh, what are the colors, black and white? Yeah, tone, I guess. Um, to give the effect of the terrain kind of blending. So I'll switch this back, set device display hint back to normal and we can see how it actually affects that terrain. Now we'll take our basic coverage and let's have a look at the options for it. Um, there's a few presets. So if I set it to Dover, it's gonna be very green. We've got sand, rock, vegetation, and erosion. Now those are names that they have given to the different areas that they mask out based on the height and the slope. The erosion is uh, gonna be applied based on whatever um, I, plug into the erosion um, input. You can do things like modify the height cutoff. So you can actually bias it so that these areas of rock and grass and that kind of thing happen at different points in the texture. And you can also affect the slope cutoff. So you can have it be very aggressive with only applying certain things to flat areas, or you can soften it out and have it be a lot more gradual like, like so. I don't really like that one. What one do I like? I don't know, I guess that one's kind of cool. And this height cutoff is going to affect this vegetation, which I'm gonna call snow. And then let's have a look at the slope cutoff. We can have some really like gnarly stuff there. I want, I want the sort of terraced bits to still look a little bit isolated. So I'll hit that one. And now let's take the flow map and plug that into the erosion input and see what happens. So what you can see is now that erosion color is being applied to all of the areas where 
the material would have broken away and run down the crevices and collected in the bottom there. If I were to take the wear map and plug it in there, we can see that it's just showing the areas where that sediment was taken from rather than tracing it all the way down to its natural end point, uh, subject to gravity and all that kind of stuff. If I take this, which one is this? This is the deposition map. It's just going to apply the erosion information in the place where, you know, it was deposited. So I'm actually going to go for the wear map and plug it in there because I find that if I, I the flow map is the most striking visual one, but I think that that's probably better for things like uh, snow or something that or like recently melted ice or something like that. Something that's actually still moving. So lava would be perfect for this. Um, the wear map I kind of like because I think it's going to make it feel a little bit more like it's been eroded for a long time. So, I hear you ask. This is all well and good. I can see a color texture there. I can even run this and uh, update it to that point and get a nice higher resolution version of it so I can see some of that deposition information. But how do I actually see it on my terrain? They're two separate things. The way that we do that is by creating a new output. Uh, World Machine has a special node called Overlay View, where you can take one output and map it onto another one. So I'll drop that down here, and I'll take my primary output for my height field and plug it into the height field there. Now if I click on it, I'll see my terrain. And if I take my basic coverage and plug it into the overlay input, which it calls mixed, which means it's an RGB image instead of a, a, a height map, I plug that in there, bam! I can see my terrain with all its colors and its beautifulness. Yes, I'll move that over here. Have a look at this thing. Look at that. That is sick. I've got my ice snowy business up here, or it could be whatever color I decided to make it. Um, I use the presets because they're pretty and that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, I've got my little canyon where I could have something happening down in the middle here, which is all well and good. So in the next video, um, I want to talk about actually outputting this material, um, outputting the textures uh, and uh, give you a look at that. So check that out too, if you are interested. Peace.